प्रेस द बेल आइकन ऑन यूट्यूब एंड डोंट मिस अनादर अपडेट नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल आई हैव टू टॉपिक्स फॉर यू टूडे एंड माई फर्स्ट टॉपिक एक्चुअली डील्स विथ अ टर्म कॉल्ड यूनिक सेलिंग प्रोपोजिशन वी यूज दिस टर्म अ लॉट इन एडवर्टाइजिंग एंड मार्केटिंग यूनिक सेलिंग प्रोपोजिशन और यूएसपी यू सी यूनिक सेलिंग प्रोपोजिशन इज बेसिकली a proposition that the brand adopts to make itself different from the other brands it's a proposition that the brand adopts to ensure that it goes closer to its target audience now i'll tell you what am i talking about you see bharatiya janata party seems to be actually wanting to be seen as an anti muslim party they want their policies to be seen as anti muslim somehow that's how it is coming through and i will try and justify why i am saying this so that's my topic number 1 my topic number 2 you see maharashtra farmers are going through hell they had a very bad year and the future is also not looking all that good there is a lot of hopes on this new government and these politicians that these people have elected and sent to the parliament to the assembly and unfortunately our politicians are busy playing savarkar and rahul gandhi in the assembly how fair is that let's discuss that in detail let's get right into the show most of the bills that were passed in the parliament after the modi 2.0 were bills that directly or indirectly or in some form concerned the muslims of this country be it the triple talaq be it the article 370 abrogation be it the caa or the cab when it was a bill and caa when it became an act concern the muslims i am not saying therefore other bills were not passed but most of them now the fact is while the government has been defending its bills government has been defending its its actions its policies but somewhere down the line this government has not been actually coming out and talking to the muslims and addressing the muslims about their policies what they are taking i will tell you what i mean by that you see when it comes to triple talaq the government went out and said a lot of things but what the government didn't tell you and didn't tell the muslims or didn't tell the people is that they have not banned triple talaq they have just banned instant triple talaq or as they call it the talaq e biddat instant triple talaq and you know what instant triple talaq is not even followed by most of the muslims most of the muslims also don't follow it in fact the muslim community don't allow you to follow uh, talaq e biddat there are community elders that come intervene and ensure that you know there is a there is a compromise or whatever so talaq e biddat is not really followed like randomly it is it is a very few percentage of people who follow talaq e biddat so triple talaq as a concept has not been stopped but somewhere down the line the message that has been sent to the country is triple talaq is stopped possibly that is what the message that bharatiya janata party wanted to send to this country ironically if you have noticed i found more hindus happy about the fact that triple talaq was banned than muslims that's one the other thing is just hear this clip Uh, as i understand you know uh, what the indian government has done in pra- uh, in reality is uh, they have amended the citizenship act where the naturalization period of 12 years for uh, these minorities in uh, uh, the neighboring countries has been brought down from 12 years to 6 years 
uh, they have not touched the provisions which are uh, in, uh, which affect the uh, Muslim immigrants, mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, seeking uh, asylum in India. The period remains 12 years. So it is not. It is actually not the fact that you know uh, the Indian government is refusing to take Muslims. Mm -hmm. It's just making a difference between the period of naturalization between the Muslims and the non-Muslims mm -hmm. in a broader sense. Mm -hmm. But this was not explained properly by the government. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, uh, this was actually not uh, also uh, uh, explained to the neighboring countries as well. And uh, you know, uh, had it included in that sense, you know, uh, Myanmar and Sri Lanka, the entire anti-Muslim uh, uh, branding of BJP could have been easily avoided. So uh, one really doesn't know whether the BJP wanted to avoid that branding or they were they are happy with the branding. Unfortunately, it looks like like you know they are happy with the branding of being anti-Muslim. Like Professor Uttara Sahasrabuddhe, the head of the department International Politics of Mumbai University said, "You see, the Citizenship Amendment Act now." is basically what it has amended is it is not an act which says that they will not give citizenship to Muslims. It says that Muslim illegal immigrants will still have to spend 12 years for naturalization wherein non-Muslim illegal immigrants has to only spend 6 years. Is that good? No, it is not. Is that fair? Absolutely not. Because what a Muslim should get so the same treatment should be given to any other person, Hindu, Muslim, Sikh, whoever. That is what India is all about. But the fact still remains that that's not what the message that has gone out. While the Home Minister has constantly said it doesn't concern Indian Muslims, it's a fair the fact. It, is, it doesn't concern Indian Muslims. But nowhere has the government gone out and said that, you know what, we are not, not allowing Muslims. To, to come to India or not taking in uh, illegal immigrants to India. That is not what is happening. What is happening is that illegal immigrants, Muslims will take 12 years for naturalization and non-Muslims will only take 6 years. Things would have not been good. Therefore, th that doesn't make this, uh, this, this act right. Absolutely not. But at least the truth is that no, they are still not stopping a Muslim to come to India. Why are they not talking about it? What is the reason that the government is not going out, out there and talking about it? Is it possibly because they will be seen as somebody who is sympathetic to Muslims or they want to create an image of themselves where they say that, oh, we are unfair to Muslims. It does BJP want itself to be seen as an unfair party to Muslims? And that is why they are not talking about it. So that's one question you should think about. Number two. You see, I read a tweet today by one of the protesters of Jamia. And the tweet said, don't underestimate the power of hijab. Of course, we will cover the face and the name and all that. Another tweet from a very, very famous student leader. I was very surprised to read this. And this person says, they don't apologize for electing a mass murderer. We don't have to apologize for saying God willing and God is great. This is not cocktail party. This is resistance. Of course, of course, nobody has to apologize for saying God is great and God willing. Of course, nobody has to apologize for it. But you see, what is happening now is we see that People are fighting for secularism by being communal. You see, the entire resistance is to ensure that we get a secular India and the way we are trying to get secular India is by being communal. Look, think about it. Is this going to work? Who are you helping? The moment when you say that they didn't apologize for electing mass murderer, we... What they and we? What are you talking about? I thought this entire fight was because we wanted to see ourselves, call ourselves and be us rather than we and they. So I guess, I guess a lot of us are losing direction. A lot of us are going the wrong way. And I hope they correct their course 
and come back to what we always wanted it our country to be secular and for all 2119 farmers died this year and the number is going to grow and the fact is if no interventions which we have been saying from day one if there is no intervention from the government if the government doesn't intervene to do something this number may double by the end of march 31st and our government currently with their opposition is busy playing rahul gandhi and veer savarkar somebody wearing savarkar's cap somebody wearing supporting rahul gandhi and so on and so forth first of all what is bharatiya janata party talking about you see if rahul gandhi said something about savarkar which i thought was unnecessary it shouldn't because savarkar is a deceased leader he's over he's gone he's dead what are you talking about this is the same thing that bharatiya janata party does for nehru why are we why are we getting nehru and savarkar that is over let's move on so rahul gandhi said about savarkar and here bharatiya janata party and our good former chief minister mr devendra fadnavis got an opportunity to create halla in the assembly he got himself a fantastic cap and he started talking he started creating ruckus in the assembly he and his people so the assembly work stopped and this debate started the farmer suicide the drought that discussing that stopped and we are discussing rahul gandhi versus savarkar pray let me ask bharatiya janata party my question number 1 is congress is a different party to shiv sena if they haven't noticed till now they are two different parties they are not one party they may have two different ideologies they may have two different views so big deal what the people are bother about we get good governance and if they come together and can give good governance is okay with us and pray tell me you are talking about two different parties when it comes to bjp you see at one end our good prime minister mr narendra modi says that he is a huge bhakt of mahatma gandhi and on the other hand his mp goes out and calls nathuram godse a martyr that's okay you are talking about rahul gandhi and uddhav thakre having two different views i am talking about your party prime minister and your party mla having two different views that's okay what is the problem with this what is the problem with this so you know not only that let me tell you some few more there's a times of india report which says on the outskirts of uttar pradesh may be renamed as nathuram godse nagar your government your state government uttar pradesh state government is bjp government central government bjp government prime minister says he is a he is a fan of mahatma gandhi and here your yogi adityanath wants to name meerat district as nathuram godse nagar when it can happen in your party what 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 are you talking about between shiv sena and uh, and and congress the most important factor for both all the parties be it bjp be it shiv sena be it whoever farmer is in distress this session this winter session is going to prove very very important for the future of maharashtra farmers if these people they spend this entire winter session with all these shenanigans what is going to happen is those farmers will suffer suffer there will be more deaths and these people will be responsible for that deaths for nothing else for the sake of those farmers kindly do your jobs kindly govern kindly ensure that you intervene and make their lives better that's a humble request namaskar